What's up, Internet? Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow. We are now bringing you guys our thoughts on all the latest big releases this year. And today we're talking about a game that was originally planned to just be a minor add-on to its predecessor, but was then turned into a full-blown sequel. So sit back and see if this game is worth picking up on its own as we talk about one of the raunchiest, silliest, and most hilarious games this year, Saints Row 4. <laughs> So, Saints Row, a series that originally started off as being just a slightly more wackier sandbox alternative to games like Grand Theft Auto, went through some major changes in the third game, which made it a lot weirder and wackier, and the fourth has pushed this even farther to where it's more or less unrecognizable compared to what it started off as, which is also an inside joke the game likes to poke fun at as often as possible. On the surface and at a first glance, there really isn't a whole lot to differentiate between Saints Row the Third and Four, outside of some new clothing options and an expanded city with alien occupants. The engine is the exact same, with the same visuals that are far from gorgeous, though of course that isn't exactly the main goal or strength of the series. Now running on our system at ultra settings, we averaged around 97 frames per second during regular play, with a few parts slowing down here and there just because of how many crazy things were happening all at once. Now if you guys want to check out the exact system specs we were running it on, make sure to check out the links in the description to check out all the individual parts of our build. Now getting back to the game, character creation is still just as robust, and while its only real changes from the third include new clothing and tattoo options, it's still just as jarring to work with the sheer number of options available. The music has received a change, but that's only because the soundtrack is of course all pulled from real world songs, used to create various music stations. Most of which are really enjoyable, though some genres are noticeably lacking, even though they were present in the third game, like the Metal Station. Now what additions I've mentioned so far are pretty minor in terms of how it differentiates it from the third game, but there is one single addition that really changes up the entire flow, and that is superpowers. Now this one thing really does change how the game is played, mainly because it adds a lot of new offensive abilities like being able to do things like freeze enemies or throw cars at people using telekinesis, but also adds a lot of exploratory options like super speed and jumping, which more or less makes all cars in the game useless outside of the occasional tank. Now while this not only changes the game's core design, it also adds a new list of activities like trying to cause mass destruction with telekinesis, completing speedy time trials on foot across the city, or even a superpower fight club where you fight against other people with, well, superpowers. Now along with superpowers, there are also a number of new weapons that have been added along with old favorites, and some of which seem to exist just to demonstrate how silly they wanted this game to be, with my personal favorite being the dubstep gun. The game's main campaign is also a distinctive move from its predecessor, mixing traditional missions involving shootouts and car chases with levels that depict characters' personal hells, coming in a variety of ridiculous forms like text-based adventures, movie parodies, and even old-school-style side-scrolling beat-em-ups. What plot the game has is heavily based upon mocking numerous other franchises, whether that involves the ability to romance every member of your team at any given moment, or doing any number of plot events that mock popular movies. Never mind the fact that the entire concept of the Steelport simulation is more or less the major tricks with some Mass Effect thrown in. None of it by any means is entirely original, and not everyone is a fan of purely referential comedy, but it manages to do so many different ones at once with its own raunchy twist that you can't help but find yourself enjoying every absurd moment. Now, the truth is, I really can't give you that many objective reasons for why Saints Row 4 should be considered a good game. It's by no means visually stunning, the gameplay is more or less identical to Saints Row the Third, with the exception of superpowers, and what comedy there is is very much based on how many different pop culture references you can catch. That being said, I can't help but have just the biggest stupid grin on my face while just doing stupid things in the game, which is really what its end goal is. I can't make any other strong argument for it other than the fact that it is pure, simple fun. And it lasts you a healthy 20 hours as long as you're just doing the main campaign and as many missions as you can, but can last even longer if you're willing to go into co-op, doing not only competitive missions, but also just causing massive chaos with all the sandbox options. My really only huge problem with the game is a flaw that it shares with the third, and that's that you can't replay any missions, which is especially tragic in this one considering how many interesting, unique ones were offered in your teammates' personal hells. It's also really pathetically easy on normal difficulties thanks to an already unbalanced combat system, getting the addition of superpowers which just throws it all out of whack. So if you're looking for some degree of challenge out of the game, you have to make sure you raise the difficulty immediately. Now in the end, the one thing I can say to recommend Saints Row 4 is if you're looking for something that is just simple, dumb fun. It doesn't require any kind of grinding time to build levels, you don't have to work on your skills to play in multiplayer modes, you just get to run around right away and do stupid shit. It's not the deepest game by any means, but it'll have you laughing plenty as long as you enjoy referential humor. And even if you don't, there's enough purely raunchy or just dirty jokes that'll still get you anyways. Well that was our review of Saints Row 4, if you want to grab it for yourself so you can do some stupid sh 
Make sure to check out the link in the description. And once again, if you are interested in checking out the system we're running it on, the link will also be down there. Now, while you guys are down there in the description, make sure to look just a little bit higher to see that like button and hit the crap out of it to let us know how much you guys enjoyed this content, as well as subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest content and vids that we have planned for you. Till then, you guys have been watching Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Kevin, and we'll see you next time.